Hello, welcome back to part three of this three-part series on how to use a collaboration health assessment tool. Um, for this last part, we'll look at how to access the results. So as you can see, I've logged in, and the first thing I do is click on the View Results button. Now this brings up information about how to interpret the results. Um, you can pause this video if you want to read this in more detail, but essentially the scores um, are on a one to five scale, with higher scores uh, meaning um, greater health on that particular dimension. Now you'll see that there's bar graphs behind there, and they essentially show the average agreement um, across the questions relating to each sub-dimension of collaboration. You should note though that the scores that you'll see are partly a reflection of the health of the collaboration but also partly a reflection of the maturity or how old the collaboration is. So you have to take these results with caution if for example you're just starting out because we would expect a new collaboration to perhaps be scoring lower on some dimensions. Finally, we also provide some guidance based on your scores, but again, you have to also consider the context that you're working in as well as uh, the maturity of the collaboration. Okay, you can bring that up again just by clicking on interpreting the results as well, so you can come back to that as much as you like. Rightio, the first thing that we'll see is that we are under the structure tab, and we've got 100 people responding. This, this is just dummy data that we um, put in just for the, the purpose of demonstrating how to use the chat tool. So the structure tab, this is about the rules of the collaboration, it's what we do. Uh, this is in contrast to the process tab which is more about the way we work. But of course you can read more about this by downloading our report and you can get to that by clicking on the about section from the registration page. So if we look at our shared goal section just here, we can see our bar graph and this represents the proportion of people that strongly agreed with the questions relating to each of these three sub-dimensions of the shared goal dimension. So that's the average across the, just across those three measures and we can also see here that approximately 10% on average disagreed with the statements and we'll see these statements shortly. Essentially, uh, the more green you see, the better. It means that um, a collaboration is healthier. Okay, so scrolling down, we can see that this section here is amber in colour, and this is because, on average, the scores were just under 3.5 out of 5. Now, this is an arbitrary uh, level. Um, in the future, we hope to be able to use benchmarks to... Um, demonstrate how well collaborations are going relative to how long they've been in operation. But that'll be in the future when we get more and more people using the tool. At the moment it's just uh, an arbitrary indicator, but what it means is that on average uh, the scores across those three sub-dimensions, so the shared understanding of the approach, aspiration and understanding the challenge, fell just under 3.5. But we can see here that we actually scored a little bit higher on this sub-dimension and a little bit lower on this sub-dimension. So we can scroll down and you can see the, the general feedback that we provided for, um, you know, for those particular scores. Again, you can, um, you can pause this if you want to read this in more detail. This next feature allows us to look a little bit more closely at the actual scores to each of the questions that collaboration members answered. So if we just click on hide more details, and we can see that these are the three questions in the collaboration health assessment tool that relate to that shared goal dimension. We can see here that we had 99 responses. Although there was 100 people taking part, or you know, this dummy data, um, one person or one case didn't have data, so they might have skipped a question, for instance. So with our dummy data, the average score for this question was 3.44 out of 5. So that fell just below that 3.5 cutoff. But again, it's, it's just an arbitrary value. You'll remember in um, section 1 and 2 of, of the series that the collaboration lead could indicate uh, the different groups working within a collaboration. And then as people filled out the survey, they just click on the group that uh, they belong to. So if more than five people responded from each group, you can click on this 
and it'll give you that breakdown according to the five groups. For this one, for this dummy data, we didn't actually have groups, so it just says group one. But if you had different groups, like a leadership group, or a working groups, a community group, and there were more than five people responding from each of those, you would actually be able to see the scores for that particular question across the different groups. Okay, so we can look at the process tab. And we can see here that the dimensions are whole system engagement, communication flows, building adaptive capacity, and the holding an authorizing environment. And each of these different sub-dimensions, of course, has a question related to it, which you can see by clicking on Show More Details. Finally, our last feature relates back to those shared goals that uh, we spoke about in the earlier sessions. So you'll remember that the collaboration lead uh, noted down the goals or what they thought were the goals for the collaboration when they were setting up the survey. So of course when you do the survey yourself um, for real this will come up with the the actual goals for the collaboration. So you might want to pause the video for a second to read the instructions on the right but basically goals that are at the top of the page are those deemed most critical uh, by the collaboration members. So we can see here that 45% of, and according to our dummy data, 45% saw goal one as critical, and so that's why it's at the top of the page, compared to only 38% that saw goal three as critical. So the first thing that, sh that shows you is which goal people see, or the majority of people see, as the most critical to the collaboration. The second part is about alignment on goals. Now, when these boxes are of equal size, that means that there is a goal misalignment. It means just as many people think that it's not as critical as there are people that think it is critical. So that would be a case of misalignment. Uh, there is goal alignment when one of these boxes dominates. So if, for example, 98% of the collaboration felt that goal one was critical, we could see that, or we could argue that there is a significant goal alignment. So in the future, we hope to be able to provide um, metrics that give you a, a numerical value for how well you're aligned on each of the t three goals or however many goals there are, and also an overarching value as well. So it's a case of um, just waiting for that. One of the last features is the, the ability to print the results from your the Collaboration Health Assessment tool. So we can just click on that. And it basically has everything, all of the data, um, provided in a long format like this. And so that's all the way, all the way to the bottom, where we can see information on uh, the goal alignment as well. So that allows you to um, print off the report so you can share it with others. So that's how the Collaboration Health Assessment tool works. Um, in the very near future, we'll be providing feedback on the uh, background questions, so that'll be integrated into the results. And we'll also be providing some metrics around the goal alignment as well. Our future work on the benchmarking is an exciting project, but we do need lots of collaborations to take part in this um, survey so that we've got plenty of data to establish those benchmarks. Now if you do have any questions about how to use the Collaboration Health Assessment tool, you're welcome to email our help desk at chat at unsw.edu.au. Otherwise, all the best for the work ahead and happy collaborating.